Hello, welcome back to Wine for the People. I'm back. Uh, we have another lineup of six wonderful wines from the beautiful people at Different Drop. Today we are trying to guess off the beaten path regions. Also, Magic 38, there is just 30 cases left. Get it, it's moving like hotcakes. Don't miss out, it's good stuff. Uh, let's taste some wine. Uh, wine number one, looks like some bubbles. Uh, looks like it's red, so I'm gonna guess it's Pet Nat because this does not look like a sparkling Shiraz that I'll drink at Christmas time, but hey, call me bias. I like them a little bit deeper when I'm eating prawns. It smells amazing. Really, 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 really amazing, actually. Autolytic sort of lift, so it's obviously spent some time on Lees. Very light red fizzy. Like, it's hard to hate this. You just look at this and you go, yeah, that looks like fun. Damn, dude. Yeah, that was made for me. That was fucking apple juice. Sorry, I've just been tasting wine uh, all morning and it's kind of good to have something that has like a bit of sweetness. It was like the perfect moment for a bit of sweetness. It literally does taste exactly like that. Like you've got a jam croissant and it's really like, like really, really lovely. I have no idea like where it comes from. Like it does remind me a little bit of uh, like a Rhone Valley type sort of thing. It's got that freshness to it. It's still quite sweet, but if it's Sunday morning and it's 10, 30 o'clock in the morning and you get a can of a glass of this, how are you to refuse? Simply how. It just is so playful um, and delicious. Bubbly, juicy, there's gotta be like 4% alcohol in that. I reckon kids could have this. Um, yeah, yum, give me a does. I'm gonna go pink lady apples. Um, pink ladies. Just because it's got like the acidity from like the red skin of a pink lady apple, but then with the real sweetness of the fruit that you get when it comes in season. I used to work in fruit and veg, it's no big deal. <laughs> Yummy. Oh wait, no, fuck it. So, sorry. I'm just in. I'm just in this like wine tasting mode. All right, cool. Uh, wine number two, something slightly golden hued. Really, really quite um, yellow highlights here. Quite a gold color here as well. Um, yeah, quite quite deep and rich, which is cool. Chardonnay. Um, that's nice. I'm moving back into grape territory now. We're off the apple wagon. Great ripeness. Really good oxidative handling here. Not sweet, but a aromatic variety of some sort that uh, has been oxidatively handled. So can't get out of my head uh, Riesling, to be honest, but it could be like a Gewürzy thing or something, or some sort of derivative of that. There's a really lovely leasiness to this, which is, you know, nice and savory. I think the age is definitely working with that. It's this kind of almond and like sourdough toast character, but it's got that kind of apricot marmalade character, which I expect from Botrytis. It's not, it's got, I think it has a little bit of residual sugar. I reckon that is going to be from, I reckon it's a South African Chardonnay. I reckon it's New World. But actually, fuck the country. Let's just go New World. I reckon it's New World. That's enough. But I think it's really good. I think it's all class. And I think it's like really, really yummy. Like this is the sort of flavor I hope that one day in Australia we can make like Riesling like. Because I, I do think it's, I'm totally enamored by it. I'd pay 40 bucks a bottle and I'd buy 12. Crack a wine. <laughs> One number three, looks like it's Riesling. It's like we're comparing apples with oranges there. Look at the color difference in that, like yellow, white. Ooh, it is corked. That is, um, that's such a shame, such a shame. Um, I don't think it's anyone to, to blame. Of course, people blame cork companies for this, but I, I really don't think like, you know, it is a, such a great closure and all the really great sustainability reasons why people should be using corks. Uh, isn't like, wines like this uh, aren't a reason to abandon that whole thing. But yeah, unfortunately this, that's like, that's that's pretty like up and down. I'm not smelling absolute shit. Let me see if I can agitate it a bit. It's fucking not smelling like anything really. Wet rocks and that's kind of it. I reckon it's like a, I think it's like a Shannon. I reckon it's just Shannon Blanc because it's so flat and there's like a little bit of acid. There's a little bit of just like bright grape flavor, but it is a very easy drinking wine. That is very chilled out. If I was just stuck in a, a dark room with this, I'd kind of, I'd be, it'd be dull. It'd be really bleak. So, uh, which is what I am doing right now, uh, funnily enough, but just there's big lights and a camera in front of me. I don't know, uh, maybe Sardinia? I reckon this could be ver Vermentino, fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna go Sardinia. One number four, looks like it's been a bit of a favorite here. Mmm, <laughs> can understand why, it smells Italian. Um, yeah, right. Lovely kind of spiced herbal aroma here going on. Very red fruited, very fr like, you know, it's got that cascara like dried cranberry. And then it's really soft on the palate. I don't mind the Nebbiolo shell. Let's just do a quick tannin check. I feel good about Neb. I feel really good about calling that Neb. 
Uh, that's lovely. It's utterly lovely. Not too sure what it is though. It does feel like it's Italian. It feels kind of new world because it just doesn't have that. It's got the fruit definition of something like a, a you know, a European area, but I think it's it's gone somewhere outside of that because it just doesn't have the acidity and the structure you expect from those places. It's one of those like you could fucking you know, dab it behind your ears. And... People fucking love it. Maybe don't put it in your head, dickhead. I don't know. Uh, shout out to the cop who pulls me over on the way home and it's just like, you smell like booze. I'm like, yeah, I dabbed it on myself, don't worry. But I think it's very, very good. Uh, I would happily pay uh, 50, $60 a bottle and I'd buy 12. These are, these are all really good with the exception of that one wine, which I think maybe if it wasn't corked would be utterly stunning. <laughs> Number five, medium bodied ruby red, a bit denser, not kind of in that brick color, a bit more purple highlights, but this is the definition of scarlet, I reckon here. Mm, that smells nice too. I have three bottles of that one. It's probably my least favorite wine so far. Um, is it Pinot? I don't know, man. I've been so, I've been wonky with Pinot guesses lately. Like I'll come in here and be like, oh, it's a Gamay or a Grenache or something. Really, like, lovely wine, with the only thing that sort of detracts from this is just, it's a little bit thin on the palate. A little bit thin. What it lacks on the nose, it backs up on the palate. This thing pops. This is bright and juicy and vibrant and... This isn't screaming Pinot at me, which makes me think it's probably screaming Pinot at someone else, so I'm gonna go with Pinot. There's not an intensity here. Um, now, that could be maybe a very cold region. I'm gonna grab half a dozen of this at 35. I reckon that's exactly where it should sit. It's got that kind of GSME, but just way more G than anything else. But pretty good quality wine. I'd happily pay like 20s a bottle for it, and I would I would also buy 12. Like I'd buy, I'd buy 12 of all of these so far, so first day back, spend a lot of money. One of six, deep red. Um, yeah, so we had Nebbiolo looking stuff, we had Pano looking stuff. Richer, denser, tannins are really fine. Definitely got this Syrah energy. There is a brininess to it. It's got that peppery olive tapenade thing. It reminds me of Syrah. Nah, I reckon it's just Shiraz. I reckon that's straight Shiraz. I reckon that's gonna be 38 bucks. Beige were a wine, it might look like this. But I would still drink. I I, I love beige. Beige is a great colour. I would pay $35 a bottle for it. Hard to kind of pinpoint exactly where this would be from. I'm trying to think of like, and this style is kind of produced all over the world and it doesn't really have any standout features that kind of lean it in one direction or another, so. Unless it's really good aged big red wine, I can't really tell the difference between young, expensive reds and young, cheap reds because they all just have this like overwhelming, like big red thing going on and I can't see the forest for the trees. I don't fucking know, Canada? This could, be, this could be like a Cab Franc from Canada that they've let ripen quite proficiently. Yeah, fuck it, Canada. Let's say that's from, hmm, don't cry for me, Argentina. Let's see what the boys think though. Three, because I'd buy one to share with friends, I'd buy one as cannon fodder, I'd buy one to put in a cellar because maybe I'm wrong about the first two uh, and maybe it just needs to be cellared. Uh, and needs to open up. So let us do the hard work for you. These are six wines that I reckon you'd be happy with buying pretty much all of them. There's a couple of clear winners here for me. So hopefully uh, if you are feeling brave enough, these are six wines you can like, you know, jump out on a limb and grab it yourself um, and feel like that we've tested them for you and you would like them. So uh, let's see what the other boys think. Alrighty boys, <laughs> we're back. I'm back. Oh, let's you're go. back. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. And uh, straight into the deep end with some curly, um, uh, left of center wine regions, or off the beaten track, off I believe the, the, track. the name was the of the theme yeah. was. Yeah. And overall, I had quite a wild time. Sometimes it's about the journey, not the destination. Man, I I I bought a lot. I really enjoyed pretty much all of these, with yeah. the exception of one or two. Yeah, I enjoyed these a decent amount. There's going to be no surprises to you that I love this first wine. Obviously, fucking great wine. It's the best <laughs> the quality across the board here. I thought was. Stunning, yeah. high, like real All high stunning. Quality. No, no bad ones. The problem I had was actually identifying what underdog region could this possibly come from? Mm. Because when I tasted it, I was like, well, this is clearly from this high-end region. Yes, it could yeah. easily be from yeah. this high-end region. But 100%. never before I've had a tasting that's been so consistent where the quality has been so high. Yeah. But I know the fact that these come from underdog regions, so I don't, I have no base. We're on the same page. Uh, yeah. Fuck it, let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, wine number one, uh, like, look. Yummy. If you hate this, you don't have a personality. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you're just not a person I want to hang out with. It's no, like, it's, it's sweet, it's fun, it's delicious. If you're like, ah, oh, it's things sweet. It's like, Just shut up. Yummy. It's so much fun. Be like, get that child like wonder in you and yeah. it's so good. It tastes yeah. exactly like the, did you have a bubbly apple juice growing up? Oh yeah. Yeah, it just tastes like bubbly apple juice to me. It's so yummy. I obviously got a dozen of it. Um, yeah. I wanted to pay $28, but 
I don't know how much does wine like this cost. If that's cheap, I'll buy heaps of it. Well, what I think is you can get wines like this dirt cheap. Mm. Um, but I think this is a high quality expression mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I reckon this is Lambrusco. You reckon? I reckon this is Lambrusco. I think it's like that sweetness, that freshness. I reckon this is like Lambrusco from a hot, like, you know, from a quality minor producer. Bit of sweetness, lovely fizz, fizz to it. Bang. So I was at 12, uh, 25 dollars, please. 35 and 12? Yeah, 28 and 12. How much? Ah! Bougie. Bougie. Oh, bougie. Yeah. I believe this is um, uh, a little um, uh, old mates. Yeah, no, real wines. Ryan wines. So bougie Chardon. Um, so that is that is a French region, I believe. Yeah, no, Appalachian bougie. Um, uh, I believe this is Gamay. Oh wow, makes sense. Yum. Yeah. This is amazing. It's this yum. is an amazing wine that I would, admittedly, from the label, from the price, and like just just everything about that wine from the packaging, nah. I simply would not purchase. It doesn't. That doesn't represent that at all. Like it, it, that doesn't look fun and light and I sweet. I genuinely and hope that anyone watching this is literally like, look, I'm in the financial position where I can afford it. I'm just going to go buy one, try it out, and actually try it for yourself because it's, it's, it's like really, really it yummy. It is very eight percent ABV too. Yeah, well, yeah, I call three. That's why. That's wow. why I was at the Lambrusco. There's not much yeah, booze there. That's but amazing. You can, kids. Yeah, it's delicious, but you can buy a bottle of Lambrusco for ten bucks at Dan Murphy. So think, why oh, would you yeah. do it? <laughs> I also think it's really funny when you print a label that has like curled up edges on it, but it's not curled up edges, and you're printing curled up edges <laughs> on a nice clean edge. It's pretty. Funny. Wine number two, a bit of a curveball. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. Definitely really interesting, but mm. I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was an oxidatively handled aromatic white that I thought it was sweet, like from the smell, but then it was like dry. Yeah. The palate. Could be suffering a little bit from, by having like a sweet wine to start first. and Botrytis. Yeah, some sort of botrytized thing. Really awesome. We actually made the comment on the show, like finding botrytized dry wines is actually really hard. Mm. And then this immediately comes up after. So I'm not too sure if like Big Brother Different Drop is looking over our shoulder now, going, what, hey, there, I'll show you one. There was, a, it's it's awesome, there was a couple of producers. There was one particular producer that was making really great dry botrytized <sighs> wine, but then he turns out to be a piece of shit and we're not going to utter his name. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Henry, he did stop making those botrytized <laughs> 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 Um, you know what's embarrassing? Uh, it's definitely not me making Bratardized wines because I've smelled that and gone, ah, oh, Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nah, it's yummy, though. It's yummy, no, though. I, really I, I, it. I enjoyed it. I bought 12 and I spent 40 bucks a bottle on it. Uh, I wanted three bottles, 48 bucks. I think it's high quality. I just don't see the need for this in my life too much. But, um, lucky. There's a loose. Dry Wizard. Probably might have some New York, uh, New York State. Finger Lakes, so there might Big be some fan. Botrytis in there. Dude, we don't get yeah, a lot of US wine over here. So this is an Aussie uh, fella, um, Seb Hardy and his uh, lovely wife, uh, who have been making wine um, up in the Finger Lakes region for the better part, I would say, of like a decade or so. And they run mm -hmm. an amazing wine bar uh, up there as well. Mm -hmm. um, they have a. They were the guys that got uh, the Riz Fizz. Yes. So this is their sort of like uh, <laughs> yeah, well, American. They do, they do make wine in McLaren Vale. The Hardy family from um, uh, Jeff Hardy's um, yep. uh, son um, uh, does this. Uh, amazing wine. Really, really cool. Really cool to see. <laughs> and then Henry's just gone and uh, peeled off the import stickers. Gus, and now it's so Gus illegal, it. <laughs> illegal to sell in Australia now. Um, but yeah, delicious. Yeah, really good. 2018. Bit of age to it. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Wow. Um, looking holding Six up years nicely. Old. Yep. Nice. Hold up nicely. Fresh as a daisy. Very, very yeah. good. I call that ferment, but um, for Finger Lakes is definitely off the beaten path. Oh, ferment's a good, uh, good shot. Though. Wine number three. Um, dictionary definition of beige. This yeah. is corked. This is what? Corked. It is fucking corked. What do you mean? Oh yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah. I just thought it was boring. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was <laughs> Dude, Literally, I was like, oh yeah. I just thought it was like, oh, it's quiet. So I think the corks just swallowed that just, aroma. Just and then it tasted it. like, eh, whatever. I also tasted way, way, way after you guys. You like, did, you Like did. a yeah. solid hour it's or hours. so. Hours, yeah. Yeah, and so. Uh, I, I called it a uh, Sardinian Vermentino. Uh, and it was for $22 and I wanted two bottles. I called it a Queensland Shannon and it was $35 <laughs> for six bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. Yeah. Just imagine. That'd be on well, the beat well, track. Well, what, what was it, Lucky? It's it's definitely not it, corked. It is the ferment, though. <laughs> wow. It's, it's yeah, not corked. It's not corked. Jesus. That is Christ. vinyl lock. That is a vinyl lock. So, yeah, wow. No way, that's there you corked. Go. That is. We've not seen one of these on the show yet. No, I haven't seen one um, of them. No, Henschke are pretty famous for using them locally. Um, but there you go. It is not sealed by cork. So, if it is that just is, boring. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think it's corked. <laughs> <laughs> it could be coming from a barrel, could be coming from some, somewhere else, but um... uh, yeah, I think it's just I think it's just a dull wine. I think it's just a dull wine. Um, 
And yeah, um, this is not any sort of thing on our love for ferment because we do no, actually I love think ferment. ferments are severely underrated. But yeah, um, yeah so sorry. Not I'm all wines ferments. What? Ferment is the variety. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a joke. Stop it from, stop I stop noticed from that mint. One. That was serious <laughs> <laughs> to me. Finally, thinking I understand Nebbiolo. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because the colour, it was like that mm. sort of bricky, browny sort of thing. It had nice mm. tannin in it. I said it was from South America because I was taking steps in the dark with countries and things like that. But I don't know. I, I just looked at it and went, I reckon this is Neb. And then I mm. tasted it and I was like, my mind hasn't been changed. It's got some Nebby feelings. Mm. Um, and the tannin really is like that grippy live thing. It feels like an Italian variety. So, mm. Yeah, it smells like uh, it smells like pasta fire. Yeah. Which is sound I, 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 I know, I know, I know, oh, I know. Yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Smells Italian. I, I call this. I also call this Nebbiolo, hey. but I call this Western Victoria because if you think mm. of it in a global context, Central mm. and Western Victoria is off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went there. So you know, probably a boat a stretch in Australia, mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, I, yeah, I think it's awesome. I You're, think it's delicious. Very good wine. You're very the resident wine. Nevhead. What did you think? The most. So sixty bucks a bottle, and I wanted to buy twelve. I thought it was all. Class. Yeah, yeah. I was 50 and 12. Very, very yummy. I was 55 yeah. and 12. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. up there, mid price, very I'm delicious. Oh, yeah. If it's not Nebbiolo, it's the Nebbiolo that looks more Nebbiolo than Nebbiolo. Zinamavro. Yeah, but it, this also yeah. looks quite scent. It's not as wow. like, From awesome. Northern rich Greece. and iron. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah Zinamavro. I didn't call it this time. Sorry, boys. Um, <laughs> Macedonia. Macedonia. Um, uh, that's not how they say it. Yeah, Macedonia. Um, yeah, wow, this is the like this is the most like easily drinkable uh, Zinamabra I've ever had. Like, yeah. was, yeah, most yeah, of them are really yeah, rich totally. and tannic mm. and like uh, spicy and iodine. This is like young and fresh and pretty. But like, kudos to you for, for choosing this as Neb as well, because like that's it's a big step to be able to identify that in the glass. And even though it's not Neb, it is like if you're, it's close if you're yeah, adjacent. It is yeah. so adjacent to that in yeah. terms of flavor profile, structure, everything. Yeah, so, because well two done. years ago I would have called it Cabernet, you know, because it's just yeah. like not yeah. Shiraz, which is so. way off base. But <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like you would be awarded most points in a in a tasting exam yeah. for calling this Neb. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's like yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's, you're very close. But, uh, wine number five. I also really enjoyed this. This was very. Uh, it's another twelve bagger for me. Very good, fun and juicy, and mm -hmm. yeah, um, very very playful. Meh. I really liked it. Um, I, it reminded me of a lot of like Eastern European uh, reds, mm. like so that blau Frankishy, Zweigelt, Zweigelt, yeah, 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 things yeah, like yeah. that. So that's cool. kind of where I was in. The, I went to Slovenia. Mm. So um, that's a good shout. I yep. think that's where I'm kind of sitting. But yeah, delicious. Yeah, too savory and herbaceous to me. I wanted it to be brighter and more fruit forward. I think. Yeah, really cool. Uh, I wanted twelve forty eight bucks a bottle. Uh, I was six for thirty five. Uh, three for four. Go up. Go up. Oh um, my goodness. Chinese. Is it? Let's have. Armenian, Armenia. Armenian wine. Oh, wow, that is definitely what I was not expecting. How cool is this? This is cool. Mount Ararat, not the Victorian one. No. Uh, <laughs> good math. That's there. amazing, though. But still, uh, no, I spend a lot of time on Mount Ararat, so yeah, this is good for me. Yeah. Uh, Bible heads out there. Um, wow. The indigenous, uh, sorry, the indigenous Arini Noir grape in its purest, purest form in long uh, traditional periods, long periods in traditional amphora. Wow. This is uh, a tribute to the 6,100 year wine tradition. So this, this is totally worth 70 bucks. 100%. 100%. That's totally worth 70 bucks. For you guys, yeah. <laughs> like, there's yeah. no I, way. There's nowhere for me to take that. But how, cool, how fucking cool is the brand? It's very cool. That is the that label is, is yeah. sick. That that's so very so cool. cool. It's a cool looking bottle. Yeah, very very, very fun. cool. I I'm stoked. Thank you, different drop. Thank you. Uh, yeah. that's such a fun wine to taste. I'd imagine that you don't know heaps about the origin, uh, the indigenous grape of Armini Noir. Uh, Armini Noir. Uh, Noir. Yeah. Arrini. Any relation to Pinot Noir? Doubt it. Fuck. Then we finished up with some Argentinian Shiraz. I mean, <laughs> could be. Could, it actually it smells like could Syrah. be. It smells like yeah, uh, yeah. I went for um, I went Ca Canada Cab Franc. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. again. I was just like, fuck it, off the beaten path. Nothing's more off beaten than Canada. Um, so, well, it probably is, but you know, I think Greenland. it's Greenland. Yeah, if you can oh, grow yeah, stuff. Yeah, that does smell sulfury. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's definitely bound there, but. Mm -hmm. And what at 35 bucks. I think when you bought yeah. less than 12 was this one, which you didn't even try. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's stemmy, it's um, tannic, <laughs> spicy. Sorry, so you smelled this wine that wasn't under cork and went, oh, it's corked and didn't taste it. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> awesome stuff. Still, I still think it's corked. I think it's just come from a different way. But it can't be. Actually, it can be. Wines can be corked from two ways. What's the other way? Barrel. 
So um, it will be barrels instead of corks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been King Kong and no, it's been Donkey Kong. It's been Donkey Kong. <laughs> been King, been King Kong. <laughs> Uh, I went two for 30. I am, yeah. Meh. Yeah. Uh, three for 38. Stay now back from Argentina. Argentina! Oh, really? Woo! Argentina. It's not quite crown worthy, but you know what? Calling it Argentina is very, very good. How many countries are there in the world? Like one in 256? I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's very good. Equally off the beaten track. Yeah, but what region in Argentina? That's where it kind of comes down to. Is it talking like pretty, pretty I elevated? I can't read that. I can barely read that as well. Yeah. Talakawiki, uh, sorry, uh, the upper uh, Kalchaki Valley in the Salta region. So it's not like blue chip for um, Argentina, but I yeah, don't know about this one. It tastes great. It's yeah, it's it's, it's Malbec. Great steak. It's Malbec, but yeah. Uh, well, that's us, uh, gentlemen. Uh, wine of the lineup. Yeah. Yeah, I think value and what's in the glass. Is that the I second time really Cinema Bros won this? Uh, no, 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 no. We well. did. We never. We didn't we call never the other it. one. Oh, um, shame. But yeah, well, this is very, this is very yummy. This is this is. I think if there was more Zinema Bros like this, it would be really exciting. All over it. Yeah, it needs to kind of stop All trying right. to be Barolo. Try to be this. Just yeah, be this that. good. Just be you. Do this. You do you. You do you. No, no you, you do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, that's it. Zinema, bro. Not always what you crack it up to be. Uh, see you next week. Ciao. Ciao.